Hey everyone, welcome back to John Codes. Today we're gonna to be talking about the six best productivity tools for software engineers. These are all tools that I use in my day-to-day -day work and they've helped increase my productivity and help me be a better software engineer. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first tool I wanna to talk about is Alfred. Essentially what Alfred is, is it's a replacement for Spotlight Search. So I've configured it here with Command Space, which is normally reserved for Spotlight Search but I could do things just like in Spotlight Search, like open Spotify or iTerm or get any other application going. But I can do a lot of other really powerful things like Google for how to program. And then that'll automatically open up Google with my query there. You can do all kinds of really, really powerful things. You can search files. You can do whole automation suites with Alfred. You can listen to music. You can run terminal commands with Alfred. It's an extremely, extremely powerful tool and a really good replacement for Spotlight Search. Another thing I really like about Alfred is that it's fully configurable. You can change its appearance. You can change all of its settings. There's even a remote option to run Alfred commands from your phone. It's really, really awesome. Now, probably one of the most important tools for any developer to be familiar with is their terminal and their shell. So having a really good terminal can really up your productivity. My terminal of choice on MacBook is iTerm2. And iTerm2 is a really powerful, featureful terminal replacement for the Mac terminal. And we can look at it right here. I have it running. And we can look at some of its configurations. We can go to preferences and we get all kinds of different things. We even have appearance, and we can look at some of the different configurations here, different color settings, uh, light settings, dark backgrounds. We even have some other light ones here. We got all kinds of stuff. Now what's really powerful about iTerm is all of its customization and features. So let's look at some of the features it has, different panels it can do, a hotkey to bring iTerm to the front, really powerful search, auto completion, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of features I'll let you look at. But iTerm is really great. I really recommend finding a terminal that's really powerful, customizable, and that you can use to make your workflows more productive. Now, at number three, I think one of the most powerful things that you can learn to do and be more productive on your Unix system is learn a little bit of Vim. Now, I'm not saying that you have to become like a Vim wizard or anything or a Vim master, but it can be really good to use Vim to edit files on the fly. So let's say that I want to edit my Z shell configuration file. So let's go in here, vim.zshrc, and that opens up my Z shell configuration file for editing. Now, there's a few really important things you need to know about Vim. There you saw, that's how you open a file, is you just type Vim and then the name of the file. If that file doesn't exist yet, then it'll create that file. And next you need to know how to enter editing mode or insertion. So all you gotta do is press I, and you can see down here that I see insert. And now I can start typing stuff. So let's add something to the top of this. Let's echo, hello world, and then the next most important thing you need to know is how to get out of insertion mode. And that's just hitting escape. So I hit escape and I can see the insert is gone. Now I can keep moving around my cursor with the arrow keys. There's other ways to do that, but for beginners, arrow keys are the easiest. And then the next most important thing is saving and exiting. And you can do that all in one with colon. Now the colon enters you into command mode and WQ. W stands for write, and Q stands for quit, so I hit the WQ. And then let's start a new Z shell session, and we can see that starts up there. Now we can see by editing that configuration file that Vim was used just on the fly, on the command line here to do that. If I wanted, like I said, to edit a new file, vim new file.txt, this would open a brand new file. Again, I, to get into insert mode, we can type some stuff hit escape to get out of insert mode, and then WQ to save and quit. If you didn't wanna save this file, you would just do Q exclamation point, and that would get you out of Vim completely. Now, those are like the most basic things about Vim, but learning just a little bit of Vim can be really powerful on the fly to be able to edit files within your terminal directly. Now, number four, 
my next most productive tool and probably one that I use honestly the most is something called Flycut. And Flycut is essentially a buffer for the things that you copy and paste and it creates a long list that you can basically go into, search through, and extract things as you need. So let's see that at work. Let's say that here is some text I need. I come over here and command C to copy, and then that goes away, I do some other stuff, and then I need to copy something else. Here's another thing. And I copy this thing. Now, let's say that I do some more stuff time goes by. Let's say I need that first thing. Now traditionally with just normal copy and paste, if I hit command V, that very last thing that I copied is right there for me. But I need the first thing that I copied. What I can do is use command shift V to enter fly cuts buffer. And I can continue to hit command shift V or use the arrow keys to go up and down and see the things that I've copied. And I can see the very first thing that I copied was the first thing, and I have access to it. Now it's super, super powerful. You can almost think of it like a stack, and the first things that you copy go to the bottom of the stack, and then more things you copy go on top of that, go on top of that. So it's really powerful to be able to save snippets or go back kind of in history with things that you had been copying or you might need a little bit later. Now, maybe contrary to popular belief, but I think that number five, the next most powerful productivity thing is a good notebook and a pen, especially in meetings when with, you're with a lot of people, it can be kind of obnoxious to be banging on the keyboard typing or getting on a note-taking app, but pen and paper can be really powerful tools to jot your notes down, write down your ideas real quick, sketch something out. There's just something about physically writing that is really powerful and can help you extract your thoughts, get your ideas out there. And even if I'm going through a hard programming problem, just sometimes writing it out, drawing out the problem can really help me a lot. So I think having a notebook and a good pen, these can just be really, really great tools to increase your productivity. And finally, I think the most productive tool that I use is something called Magnet, or a lot of people use something called Shift It. And all that is, is a window manager. So with Magnet, I use Command, Option, Control, hold all three of those, and then use the arrow keys. And I can move my windows around as I need. And this creates an easy way to manage my spaces and manage my windows as I see fit. So let's say that some window pops up here. More often than not, I'll use command control option, hit over, and then it snaps it right to a place where I need to be. Let's say I also have a browser open. I can go right over to the other side and there we go. I have a side-by-side -side of two things that I can use Windows perfectly managed, space used as I need it. It's a really, really great tool, especially with a big monitor that I have. It can be really nice to use this magnet to manage my windows instead of having to use the mouse, click and drag things around. Magnet is really great. And like I said, one of the most popular alternatives to magnet is something called Shift It. So let's take a look at that. And here's Shift It on GitHub. And keep in mind that Shift It, at the time of this recording, is not being maintained on GitHub. There's other open source alternatives to Shiftit and Mac OS Windows managers. Shiftit is by far probably one of the most popular, but there's also paid options. There's all kinds of different things, but if you Google for Shiftit and then maybe look for alternatives or even the alternative given in the readme here, you should be able to get going pretty quickly. Well, and there you have it. Those are the six most productive tools that I use as a programmer. Number one, Alfred, it replaces Spotlight Search on macOS. It's really powerful for searching files, opening applications, really quick on the keyboard commands. Two, a powerful customizable terminal. My favorite is iTerm2 on macOS. There's tons of great options for other Unix-like distros. Three, Vim, even just a little bit of Vim can make you that much more productive on the terminal and in your day-to-day -day work. You can edit files on the fly, do all kinds of stuff with Vim. Four, Flycut, which is a buffer for the things that you copy and paste. Really easy to save stuff in there and get something you copied you know, an hour ago back really easily. Five, traditional paper and pen. 
really great to write your ideas down, jot down a quick to do, take meeting notes, all kinds of things. And six, shift it or magnet, which is a window manager for configuring your workspace and using all of your real estate for your screen. Well, thanks for watching everyone. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you next time.